Oh, well, how are you all doing today? Children, you can be dismissed for Children's Church if you haven't left already. Did we already do this? I thought it would be better if we do it a little bit later. We had a lot of things this morning, so. You guys doing okay? Do you guys have a good new year? You know, what do they say? We've made it around the sun one more time, right? It's so interesting to think about that, that we're on the earth and we're going around the sun and every year it's just another cycle around the sun, right? Like all the seasons are the change, like are all the same. Winter always happens the same time every year. Spring always happens the same time. Summer, Indiana, we get all the seasons, right? And it's pretty cyclical. It just happens over and over and over and over, same thing over and over again. You know what's kind of interesting, though? If you've learned anything uh, about astronomy, you would know that we're not just going around the sun, but also the sun and all the planets are also moving through space. It's very interesting. So it's not just like we're fixed in the universe and everything is spinning around the sun. The sun is actually moving too, so it's more like a corkscrew, which is interesting. And as I was thinking about that, I was thinking about how God's purpose for our life is not for us to just move in the same spot over and over again, but it's to move forward, to take ground, it's more like a corkscrew. We get in our normal rhythms of life, but we're also moving forward at the same time. And that's what I want to talk to you about today. My sermon title for the day is Moving Forward. Everybody say, Moving Forward. So our, my passage today is going to be in Luke chapter 5. If you have your Bibles, you can turn there. I should ask you, are you ready for the Word of God today? Yeah, we're always ready for the Word of God. Let me pray for this, and we will get into it. Father, this is your word. I pray that you would sharpen us. I pray that you would excite us today. I pray that cycles would be broken in Jesus' name. Let 2022 be a completely different year for us, Lord. Let us mark this year as a year that things changed, that cycles were broken, that we saw breakthrough this year. Lord, let this be a monumental year for us. I pray your word would just come alive in our lives, that we'd tuck away this word for the whole entire year, and that we would be moving forward for your kingdom. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. You got Luke chapter 5? We're going to be mostly in Luke chapter 5, but right at the end, we're going to sneak over to John chapter 21. So you can keep a finger there or a bookmark or something, or you could just turn there later. Sound good? All right. Ready or not, here we come. Luke chapter 5, verse 1. It's a famous story. It says this. One day, as Jesus was standing by the lake of Genesaret, with the people crowding around him and listening to the word of God, comma, let me break that down, give you a little setting. This lake is also known as the Sea of Tiberias. You'll see it in scripture. Also known as the Sea of Galilee. That's because Tiberias is a neighboring city. Galilee is the name of the area, the region that they're in. So any kind of, uh, when Jesus is walking on the water, when he's calming the storm and saying the Sea of Galilee, this is the same uh, sea. It's almost like a lake, though. If, if anybody's actually been to Israel and you've seen it, it's a big lake, but it's pretty much like a lake. And it says, he was standing by this lake with people crowding around him. This is not social distance Jesus, okay? People are all up in his face, right up in his face, around him. And they're listening to the word of God. I love that phrase because not only are they listening to Jesus preaching the word of God, but they are literally listening to the word of God. John chapter 1 says, the word became flesh and dwelt among us. This is Jesus Christ. And how awesome would it be to sit and listen to the word of God? This is what happens. And it says in verse 2, he saw at the water's edge there was two boats left there by fishermen who were washing their nets. There was two boats by the side, and there's fishermen that left their boats, and they were washing their nets. Now, we're going to learn a little bit later in the passage that for these future disciples, they were fishing all night and didn't catch anything. They were out all night on the waters, and so uh, normally, after they would finish fishing, they would come up from the water, and they would wash their fish, but this time, they're just washing their nets. 
because it's empty. There's no fish to be caught this night. See, Peter, his brother Andrew, James and John, they were fishermen. And this was their life. They would fish every night. They would finish fishing. They would come back. They would clean their fish. They would clean their nets. Then they would probably go home, sleep for a little bit, wake up in the afternoon, spend time with their family, eat some dinner, and then they went back out and they fished again. This was the cycle of life that they lived in. It was just a cycle over and over and over again. They were living to work and working to live. And the only thing that would stop is maybe when they got to the Sabbath. They would rest. They'd take a break. Maybe they'd spend more time with their family. And then next day, they'd start it back up again. It's a cycle. How perfect can we make this cycle? And I imagine when this is your life, you look at little things in the cycle to keep you going in your life. Well, you know, if we catch more fish, then maybe we can upgrade the boat. Well, you know, this time we caught a 10-pound fish. Let's hope that our fish are 11 pounds. And you make little goals for yourself, and you try to make the cycle better and better and better, and we live in a cycle. Sprinkle that cycle with a little bit of family, a little bit of faith. You kind of got something like you got the American culture. We just work, and we work, and we work, and we work. We take a rest day, probably doing some work around the house. We work, and we work, and we work, and we work. And many of us get to the end of our lives, and we look at our life and think, what did we accomplish? What did we do? What was my purpose here? Did I just work and work and work and work and work only to achieve nothing? This is what Solomon sees in the book of Ecclesiastes. He said, I, I've come to realize in my life, everything's meaningless. You work, you work, the day, it's morning, it's night, it's over, and then you get to the end of your life, and you're like, what did I do? What did, how, what's the legacy I, I made? This is why many people oftentimes have midlife crises. Because some people get halfway through their life in their 50s, their 60s, and they're like, I don't want to keep doing this anymore. And so they do ridiculous, crazy things. They quit their job. They, sell the, they move on the other side of the country just looking for some purpose in your life. It's gotten cyclical. It's gotten circular. Work, 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 work. Rest. Work, 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 work. God's will for us is not just to keep working in a circle, but it's to move forward. Every single one of us. That looks completely different for every single person, but it is not God's will for us to just stand and work. He wants us to make an impact. That's why he's given us his Holy Spirit, because he wants us to bring God's kingdom on earth like it is in heaven. You're not meant to just stand still. You're not meant to just do work in a circle. You're meant to make a difference. Every single one of us is called to make a difference in this life. And it's not too late to break that cycle. I just want to say that today. 2022 marks a year. You can start this year breaking cycles. Now, you can start any time of the year. You could start May 1st, June 22nd. But it helps when you start at the beginning of the year because you have something that can mark starting something new. And so... What is 2022 going to look like for all of us? It says this in verse 3. As they're washing their nets, he got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and he asked him to put out a little from shore. Then he sat down and he taught people from the boat. So the disciples are just cleaning their nets. The nets represent their capacity that represents the system of doing things, they're using the same old nets every single day, just washing it new. And Jesus comes to the edge of the shore and he decides to step in their boat. Praise the Lord. That is some grace. Because you can't break this cycle of cyclicalness by yourself. You need Jesus to step in your boat. Every single one of us. We can't break cycles in our life unless Jesus comes to break it for us. That should be our prayer. Jesus, break these cycles for us. Come in our boats. Change our lives. Praise the Lord that Peter and his friends were fishing all night, and they didn't catch anything. Man, that's the grace of God. Can you imagine if it was just working over and over and over again? It's only God's grace that the fish stopped fighting, that the fish stopped coming. Because now... This cycle can be broken in their lives. 
sometimes we need to look at our providence depleting as a sign from the Lord. Maybe we're in a cycle. Maybe it's by his grace that this brook has dried up. God doesn't want you drinking from the brook anymore. He wants you to move on. He wants you to break these cycles. And I love Jesus gets in the boat, and it says, he sat down, and he, the boat pulled away from the shore, and he taught the people from the boat. Now, you might ask, why did Jesus do this? This is because water projects sound. So he's kind of going out in the distance, and so he's preaching. And what I love is he starts out preaching, because there's nothing like the word of God which breaks a hardening from someone's heart. I've seen it. You can try to change people all you want, but there's something that the, the word of the Lord has that it can speak specifically to people. It's powerful. Spend time in the word. You'll be transformed. You'll be changed. The word of God is powerful. And it says this in verse 4. When he finished speaking, he said to Simon, pull out into the deep water and let down the nets for a catch. Pull out into the deep and let down the nets for a catch. Jesus is inviting these men, step out of the cycle that you're in and take a step of faith. Take a step away from familiarity and take a step of faith. If we don't take steps of faith in our life, we'll be caught in cycles. God has not called us to contentness. contentness. He's calling us to take steps of faith, to trust him. Show me a person that's not walking by faith, that's not trusting the Lord, and I will show you a complacent Christian. We are called to walk by faith, not by sight. God calls us oftentimes to things that don't make sense. And maybe some of us are in a cycle, and God is pulling you away from that cycle. You can't go forward if we continue to keep doing what we're doing. Sometimes you need to step away from what you're doing. For some of us, that looks like stepping away from situations we're in. Some of us, it looks like distancing yourselves from systems and ways of doing things. I don't know what that looks like, but if you are caught in a cycle, something needs to give. Something needs to change. God wants us to move forward. I love this because there's nothing wrong with fishing. There's no sin of fishing like, oh, Peter should be a pastor. No, there's nothing wrong with fishing. It's not always about the what, but many times it's about the how. How are we doing things? Jesus is more concerned about how we are doing our life rather than what we're doing. You could do a thousand different things and honor the Lord, but it's about how you're doing it. We're going to talk about that a little bit. It says this in verse 6. When they had done so, oh, Simon Peter, sorry, verse 5 says this. Master, we've worked hard all night and we haven't caught anything. But since you say so, I'll let down the nets. Now, this was something counterproductive. Peter knew, and the disciples knew, there's no sense fishing in the middle of the day. That's when all the fish were going none night. Sorry, I used the word none night. You can tell I have two under two, okay? Fish were going to sleep. So why would we go out into the deep? They're not going to bite. The, the best chance we have is staying by the shore and looking for fish and seeing if we can catch one. Why would we go out into the deep? Jesus is calling them to do something that doesn't make sense. Oh, would you imagine that? It's almost like they would have to lean on faith. They'd have to lean on trusting the Lord. And Peter says, well, it doesn't make sense, but since you're calling me to it, I'm going to do it, Jesus. I'm going to trust you. It says in verse 6, when they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boats to come and help them. And when they came, they filled both boats so full that they began to sink. Look at this picture. They spent all night trying to catch fish. And all of a sudden, Jesus says, go out, middle of the day, cast your nets, lay down your nets. And they are breaking nets. They are sinking boats. They are receiving so much from the Lord that it is destroying everything they had. And I think they realized in this moment I don't have the capacity for this. Jesus, what I've been praying about, I actually don't even have the capacity for. It was this self-realization 
of Peter and the disciples. My nets don't work. My boats don't work. I don't even know what I would do if I had a catch like this. Jesus oftentimes wants to break us from our cycles so he can grow our capacity. So he can grow your capacity. So he can grow your boat. So he can grow your net. So you can have more. So you can carry more and steward it in a godly way. He said, they signaled their partners and other boats to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so full that they began to sink. This is God's grace. Praise the Lord. It's destroying their boats. It's destroying their nets. They needed something like this to break them from their cycle. Now, there's only two responses you can have from this. When your nets are breaking and your boats are sinking, when you're receiving, either A, you say, praise the Lord, and you continue back into the cycle that you were doing, or you take this opportunity to say, God, I repent. I receive what you have for me. The way that I'm living according to myself, it's not working anymore. I want to follow you. And look what Peter does. It says this, when Peter saw this, he fell at the knees of Jesus and said, Go away from me, Lord. I'm a sinful man. For all of his companions, they were astonished at the catch of the fish they had taken. So you have two different groups of people here. You have Peter, who he receives an abundance from the Lord, and he realizes, Lord, I'm not worthy of this. I'm not worthy of this capacity. And you have Peter's companions who are amazed. Wow, this is awesome. We're awesome fishermen. You have two different dynamics. It's not Peter's companions that end up following Jesus. It's Peter and the disciples that follow Jesus. Because they humble themselves before Jesus. We have to walk in repentance and humility. The opposite of humility is self-righteousness. Self-righteousness says, I deserve this. My ways are good. My ways, I must have caught these fish by myself. It must be my nets. Self-righteousness, though, is the enemy of salvation. Show me somebody who's self-righteous, and I'll show you somebody who is not a Christian, who's not following Jesus. It says in Matthew, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, didn't I do this? Didn't I do this? And, and Jesus will say, get away from me. I never knew you. It takes a repentant heart before the Lord. In order to break these cycles in our life, we have to come before the Lord, and we have to lay this down before him and say, God, I need you. The way I'm doing things, I'm doing things according to my will, according to what I see right, and it's not working. Praise the Lord, it's not working. Is your cycle not working for you? Maybe it worked at first, but is the system and the way that you're living your life not working anymore? Maybe the bank account just never can get filled. Maybe well, we can never get away for our vacation. Well, it never seems like we can get the family together. We're doing the right things. We're waking up. We're working hard. We're working overtime. We're doing, you are building a kingdom for yourself instead of a kingdom for God. And Matthew 6.33 says if we seek first his kingdom, all these other things come together. Not seeking a kingdom for ourselves. Not seeking to build ourselves. Not trying to do a cycle of making this system work better and better and better. It's time to go forward. It's time to let Jesus pull you forward and seek first his kingdom. The kingdom is what brings transformation, and it brings blessing. So Peter comes before him, and he's humble. Lord, I'm a sinful man. He's not self-righteous. I'm the wise, all-knowing one. I've done this before. Peter's like, I don't know anything. I've been doing this a long time, but I really don't know anything. And I want to know you, Jesus. It says this in verse 10. And so were James and John, the son of Zebedee, Simon's partners. Then Jesus said to Simon, don't be afraid. For now on, you will catch men. Other translations say, follow me and I'll make you fishermen of, fishers of men. And it says, they pulled up their boats onto shore and they left everything, and they followed him. So Jesus invites Peter. He says, you can either keep staying here, 
You can e keep doing what, what works for you, or you can follow me. Are you following Jesus? I'm not asking, do you believe in Jesus? I'm saying, are you following Jesus? There's a difference between believing in Jesus and following Jesus. I can say, I know Jesus is real. In fact, in James it says, the demons even believe there's a God and they shudder. But are you following Jesus? What that means is I am waking up with Jesus. I'm spending time with Jesus. As I'm going throughout my day, I am constantly praying without ceasing. I am in communion with his Holy Spirit. I'm walking with Jesus. This is what it means to follow Jesus. Not just say, I believe, all right, I'm going to keep living my life. I'm going to go back to the cycle, sprinkle a little Jesus here every once in a while. No, I am leaving everything and I'm following Jesus. Meaning, as I'm walking in life, when Jesus is calling me to do hard things, I'm doing it because I left everything else. This is what it means to follow Jesus. It's radical. It's not just a, I'm going to come Sunday to Sunday service, and then I'm going to go the rest of the week, and then I'm going to come again to Sunday service. It's, God, what do you have for me every day in my life? This is the foundation we need to lay our life on. And you know what Peter does? He leaves everything and follows Jesus. And instantly, Peter becomes a super Christian. No. This began a journey of three years for Peter, of following Jesus, and a lot of mistakes. Many of you know the stories, walking on water, sinking to the bottom. Many of you know the stories, get behind me, Satan. Ouch. Peter messed up a lot. Three years he followed Jesus. But you know what Jesus was doing in these three years? He was pulling him away from his cycle. He was teaching him to follow him. It says in Mark chapter 4 that our faith is like a seed. And all of a sudden, without even realizing it, it grows a little bit of a stem. And it grows some leaves. And it grows a flower head. And it slowly before you know it, you'll say, how did this plant get like this? It just grows slowly and slowly. This is faith. This is following Jesus radically by faith and watching yourself grow, watching yourself pull away from the cycle, the cyclical cycle. You know what the enemy tool is against the seed? It's a sickle. It kills plants. It's the only thing that will keep you from following Jesus, doing what seems right to you. It says there's a way... Uh, a man follows his own way, it leads to death. God has a different way for us, and that's walking by faith. Now, here's the cool thing about this story. We get to see three years of following Jesus for Peter. We get to see all the bumps, all the bruises. But three years later, we have another scene in John chapter 21. If you have your Bibles, you can turn there. Check this story out. This is after Jesus died and rose again. This is really cool. John chapter 21, it says, Afterward, Jesus appeared again to his disciples by the Sea of Tiberias. You remember I said those were the same sea. It happened this way. Simon, Peter, Thomas called Didymus, Nathaniel from Cana and Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and the two other disciples were with him. I'm going out to fish, said Simon Peter. And they said, we'll go with you. So they went out, got caught in a boat, but that night they caught nothing. A lot of similarities here, right? Early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore. But the disciples didn't realize it was Jesus. Same sea, same shore, and still not catching anything. It's the same situation. But look at what happens different here. He calls out to him and says, friends, haven't you any fish? No, they answered. He said, throw down your net on the right side of the boat, and you will find some. And when they did, they were unable to haul the net in because of the large number of fish. Then the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it's the Lord. And as soon as Simon Peter heard this, it's the Lord, he wrapped his outer garment around him, for he had taken it off, and he jumped in the water. 
Praise the Lord it wasn't the reverse way around. Peter was fishing out there in his underwear, and he's like, all right, I'm going to get my robe on. He jumps in the water. The other disciples followed in the boat, towing a full fish, for they were not far from the shore, about 100 yards. When they landed, they saw a fire burning coals, there with fish already on it and some bread. Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish you just caught. And Simon and Peter climbed aboard and dragged the net ashore. It was full of large fish, 153, but with even so many, the net didn't tear. You see the difference there? This is a different Peter. This is, this is a symbolic picture that now Peter has the capacity. Now he has what it is. He has what it takes. It took three years of following Jesus faithfully, but now his net doesn't break. And it says this, Jesus said to him, come, have breakfast. None of the disciples dared ask him who you are. They knew who it was. They knew it was the Lord. Jesus came, took the bread, and gave it to him, and did the same thing with the fish. You notice this time, Jesus is not saying, go leave your fish. I'll be fishers of men. He says, it's time for breakfast. Sit down. Enjoy the fish with me. Let's enjoy this as a disciple of mine. Because now, Peter has the capacity to receive the blessing of God. He's not stuck in a cycle. He's not no longer stuck in this cyclical pattern of it's all about me and my kingdom. He's focusing on the kingdom of God. He's now fishing with a purpose. He's now transformed and he's changed. He's following Jesus. This is 2022. It's a new year. And this is the opportunity for all of us to make some big changes for our life. Are we going to continue walking in the same patterns, doing the same thing? Is 2022 going to look like 2021 and 2020? Are we going to make a resolution that actually counts? Are we going to choose to follow Jesus closer this year? Are we going to obey his commands and stay with him. I want you to bow your heads at this time. I think many of us, if we were honest with ourselves, we've believed in Jesus. We thought he was good at advice. But we didn't follow Jesus. I wonder what 2022 could look like if we enter this year and say, Jesus, I don't care about my systems anymore. I don't care about the ways I was doing things. I want to follow you. I want to wake up in the morning and seek your face. I want to go throughout my days and seek your presence. I want to inquire of you before I do anything. I don't want my work to be an idol. I don't want to be my hobbies to be an idol. I don't even want my calling to be an, an idol. I want you to be my God. For many of us, that takes some surrendering today. For some of us, God may be calling us to step away from toxic and unhealthy patterns and trust him. Can you trust him that the same Savior that made his disciples haul fish from the sea will do that for you when you need it? How much more important are you than the birds of the air, Jesus says? And he takes care of those every single day. God, I thank you. Many of us are in a season of following you. We've put aside our old ways of doing things and we're trusting in you. Help us to see the fruit of that. Help us to see the seed that's growing. And create in us not a cycle, but a disciple, Lord. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. We stand with us today. You know, we've been pretty go, go, go as a church since March, right? Done a lot of amazing things. These next two months, January and February, these are some cold months. It's kind of harder to do some outreach and different things. We're going to spend these couple months really laying this foundation, making sure we have it good, making sure we are really listening to the voice of Jesus and following him every step along the way. So 
when the spring comes, when the summer comes, when the fall comes, we're ready to do his mission. So let him speak into you. Let him uh, fill you up during this season and be encouraged. Jesus is inviting you to follow him. Amen? All right. We'll see you later. God bless.